Hey, what's going on? This is Kex Next, and today I'm going to show you how you can create the Darksaber from Star Wars. And this is a really cool looking lightsaber in the show. Um, it looks very unique. It has like a black core, um, and it was made popular in the latest episode of the Mandalorian series uh, when he kind of comes out of the ship carrying it. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be creating. And I have this blur over the video. I'll just turn it off for now. Um, it's just to blur out the logo because I didn't want to pay for the stock footage to uh, work on. But let's go ahead and press play. All right, so pretty cool. If I pause it, you know, you see some specs in the blade itself. And the edge of the blade along here has some noise to it. Um, so before we get started, let's go ahead and discuss what we could do to create the sword. So if we go ahead and take this picture of the sword itself, we can see you know, the most recognizable things about it is its black core. Uh, and normally this would be pretty tough to do with a plugin like Saber from Video Copilot because if we were to take a Saber layer like uh, this one and we were to set the blending mode to something like screen, you know, it is easily composited on top of the footage because blending modes like screen and add just take out all of the black from the image. But if we had a layer like this, which had a dark saber-esque looking thing on it, and we were to set the blending mode to screen, you can see it takes out the center of the dark saber, which is very problematic for us because screen is a very good blending mode to use when it comes to compositing light effects. So if we just close this up, we want to look at one more thing that we're going to be doing today, and that is the edge of the Darksaber. You can see along the edge here, uh, we have a little bit of a noise effect going on. And another thing that we have is the tip of the Darksaber is shaped differently than most lightsabers. It's more like a sword. It has this kind of bend right here, um, and it's sharp at the end. So we want to make sure that we uh, remember that when we're creating our effect. So let's go ahead and get started. We want to drop our footage into a new comp, and you can see I have mine here, just like this, just a regular video of a guy doing samurai stuff. Um, and we want to go ahead and download the Video Copilot Saber plugin. I will put a link in the description for it. It's completely free. I love this plugin. Um, and if you haven't seen it yet, go check out my video on After Effects Top 5 Free Plugins because it is one of the plugins featured in that video. But uh, go download this plugin and we'll get to work. So we want to go ahead and create a new solid. And we can call it Saber and hit enter. And on the solid, we want to right click in the effect controls, go down to Video Copilot and select Saber. Now we want to keyframe the saber to the sword. So to do that, we can just shut off the layer, make sure that the saber effect is selected so you get these kind of data points right here. And you want to click the stopwatch for core start and core end and position the points to your sword or lightsaber, whatever that you have. Um, and we just want to go ahead and keyframe these throughout the video. And in order to do that, we can go ahead and select the page down and page up keys on the keyboard to move one frame at a time and just adjust these to the tip and end of the saber. And you don't even have to go one frame at a time if you don't want to be that precise. You can go a few frames and move it around, but just go ahead and make sure that you keep these points tracked to the sword. If you want to, you can try out other things like motion tracking, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it frame by frame because I have a short video uh, and it won't take that long. All right, I've gone ahead and put the tracking points on the end of the sword. You can see as I scrub through the video, the tracking points stay with the sword. Um, and if we want to turn our layer back on, we see this is what it looks like. It, it, it stays with our sword. Um, if we want to, we can set the blending mode to screen just to see what our saber looks like. Now first thing that we want to start doing before we start duplicating layers is try and get this sharp edge that we have at the end here. So in order to do that, we can hit customize core in the saber effect settings and maybe turn up the end roundness. So it gives us a little bit of a, of a point there. And we can also turn down the end size be around 36 and it gives us uh, a point like a sword would have and that's what we want all right so now that we have our saber layer we want to go ahead and set the blending mode back to normal 
and we want to go to the render settings and set the composite settings to transparent. And this will uh, allow the layer to be composited on top of our footage without any black. But again, you know, it doesn't look like a light because it's not set to screen, but it doesn't matter for what we're going to be doing. We want to go ahead and turn the glow color to white and turn the glow intensity to zero. Then we want to create a new solid. We make sure that it's black, hit OK, and we'll just call this, we'll just call this black video, just to keep stuff organized, and hit enter, and it creates a black solid. We want to move our black solid below our saber layer and set the track mat to alpha mat. And now we have a black lightsaber. Of course, if we want to just forge ahead and not really focus on creating the noise, um, we can just duplicate our saber layer with control D, move it to the bottom, turn it on, and just turn the glow back on. And you know, adjust the settings a little bit so that the glow is smaller and make sure that it's more visible. But yeah, I mean, already you can see what we're doing. We already have our black saber and our white uh, border around it, um, which looks pretty okay for right now, but we want it to look a little bit more detailed than this. So to do that, we can go ahead and just take our black video and our matte saber layer and duplicate them with control D. Now that we have that, we want to go to our black video layer and we can turn the alpha matte off for now just so that we can see it better. We want to go to the effect controls, right click, go to noise and grain and select turbulent noise. We want to set the fractal type to dynamic progressive and we want to turn the contrast up and the brightness down just a little bit, not much. Uh, and we want to turn invert on. And it gives us like this energy looking effect. Just we, we want to keep some of those darker areas though as well. But you can see it gives us this, this energy effect. But we want this effect to be in motion because energy is not something that stays still. So to do that, we can hold down the Alt key on the keyboard or Option if you're on Mac and select the stopwatch for evolution. And now we want to type a simple expression just want to type time times and then a number and this number, however big or small it's going to be, uh, will affect how fast uh, this animates. So I'm going to type a number like 250, which would be pretty fast. And if we press play, we can see what it's doing. All right. But once we have that, we can go ahead to the track mat and turn it back to alpha mat. Now, if we look closely, we have this layer that is a noise layer inside of our saber. Maybe we can turn the brightness up a little bit more. We, we want it to be a little bit brighter. And that looks pretty good. We want to rename this layer to noise so that we know that this is our noise layer. Another thing that we can do to kind of stay organized is select uh, your noise layer and its matte. Maybe change the colors to green or something just so that we can uh, distinguish them from the other layers. And maybe we can turn the glow to something like blue. We want to take both of our green layers and move them below our black video layers. And we want the bottom edge of our layer to have this fractal noise on it. So in order to do that, we can just go ahead and grab the saber mat for our noise layer, just drop it down a little bit. And even then, you know, it's really not even that bright. So go back into the noise layer, maybe add a curves adjustment in color correction, curves, and just boost it up a little bit. But now that we have that, we want to go ahead and shrink our black part of the saber so that we can see that noise a little bit better. So we can go to the saber mat for our black video layer and go to the core size and just decrease it. Maybe turn the start size up a little bit more. And we want to go to the core softness and customize core and maybe turn it on just a little bit. And we can go ahead and, and uh, mess around with the size settings. And you know, that noise isn't really popping to me, so maybe we can go back to our noise layer, solo it, and turn the contrast up and the brightness up as well. Let's see what's, what it's doing now. All right, now we have more of this, a little bit better looking noise at this point. Another thing that we can do is go to our noise matte layer and increase the core size just a little bit. Just so we can see that noise a little bit better. And again, just, you want to play around with some of these settings just to get it uh, to look like how you want it to look. 
And we can even turn the core softness up a little bit for that layer as well. But now we do have a little bit of that noise at the edge there. Um, and we turn the core softness on for the black matte so we can get a little bit of that, of that softness that you see in this image right here. Now we wanna go ahead and add some speckles in the black saber to make it look more organic. So we can go ahead and duplicate our black saber and its matte one more time with Control D. And we wanna name this speckles. And we wanna change the color of this layer, so we can go ahead and hit Control Shift Y and set it to white, hit OK. We wanna go ahead and apply an effect called CC Starburst, which is in simulation uh, CC Starburst. And in here, you can see it already put some like white dots in there, and we wanna just increase the scatter amount. Maybe we can turn the grid spacing down a bit, turn the size down a little bit. But you know, it just gives us this kind of organic look. And really, you can put anything that you want in this layer. If you wanted to, you can even add another turbulent displace to keep it more true to the original. Just turn the contrast up, set it to dynamic progressive, invert it, turn the brightness down. But yeah, and, and then you can get some of those energy effects in there and you can you know do whatever you want there, play with the evolution. But personally, I like the little specs that CC Starburst adds to the frame. Um, but once all that is finished, you can just select all of your saber layers Right click, hit pre-compose, and we call this layer Saber. And now you can see there's no change because we had no blending modes in that whole comp that we just made. Um, so it remains transparent, which is absolutely fantastic because now we can color grade this whole effect. We can go ahead and add a tint effect, maybe um, select a color in the sky and maybe just set it to like 18%, just to kind of uh, put some of the scene color over the top of it. And we can even add like a curves adjustment if we wanted to and uh, play around with the, uh, the values of it. But yeah, that's how you create the dark saber in After Effects. Um, it's really cool looking. I hope you go out and create something that you really like with this effect. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos and you enjoy my After Effects tutorials, please make sure you subscribe and like this video. I am Kextnex and I will see you for another tutorial.